Excellencies, Mr. Deputy Mayor Baudu Singh of the Municipality of The Hague and co-sponsor of the conference, Mr. Van Hoogstraten, Director of the, U of the Peace Palace, Mr. Rentenaar, Acting Director, Department of Environment, Energy and Water of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, main sponsor of the conference, Mr. Vlaanderen, Ministry of Water and Infrastructure and Environment, co-sponsor of the conference, distinguished heads of institutions of the Water Diplomacy Consortium, distinguished guests from over 60 countries. My name is Henk van Schaik and it's my pleasure to chair this conference on water and water security and peace. For the welcoming address, I invite the Deputy Mayor of the City of The Hague, Mr. Rabin Baudu Singh. Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, I truly bid you all a very warm welcome to the city of The Hague, the city that has the honor of hosting this international conference on water security and peace. The Hague is not only the political center of the Netherlands, as it has been actually for centuries, it is also a city where the whole world is at home in various ways. As international city of peace and justice, The Hague is home to more than 130 international institutions, organizations, and NGOs. The symbol of this is, of course, the Peace Palace, which this summer celebrated its centenary. Since its inauguration, the Peace Palace has become a worldwide icon of peace and justice. Several special events have been planned to emphasize the Netherlands' unwavering commitment to a better world in which conflicts are settled peacefully. This conference is actually one of them. And since this centenary coincides with the celebration of the International Year of Water Cooperation, this offers a wealth of opportunities to draw public attention to water diplomacy and water conflict resolution. Water cooperation, ladies and gentlemen, is, a vit is of vital importance to both peace and sustainable development. So The Hague ha can be considered as an ideal location for such an event. In recent uh, years, the Permanent Court of Arbitration and the International Court of Justice, which both have their seat in this uh, Peace Palace have dealt with a number of water-related cases. And The Hague is also home to the IRC, International Water and Sanitation Center, and the Netherlands Water Partnership. In other words, one can already find the necessary expertise in the field right here in this city. Uh, it, is therefore, it, it, it therefore comes uh, as no surprise that the latest Knowledge uh, Institute to set up the multidisciplinary The Hague Institute for Global Justice has identified water management and the fair distribution of water as one of its main areas of attention. The Institute of Global Justice focuses on conflict resolution and legal matters that relate directly to water. Together with the UNESCO IAG Institute uh, for Water Education, the Netherlands Water Governance Center, the Netherlands Klingendal Institute of International Relations, and the UPS Center, the Institute for Global Justice, has set up the Water Diplomacy Consortium. And this consortium, ladies and gentlemen, provides advisory services, works on research and methodology, development and on capacity building. Growing population, dwindling per capita water availability, growing economies as well as the impact of climate change result in increasing demand for water and complicate water allocation. The need for commonly agreed water allocation agreement 
as well as sharing benefits is becoming urgent and situations of international tensions uh, are on the rise. Resolving the water, energy, food nexus is a key security challenge in my humble opinion. The Hague's expertise in arbitration and conflict mitigation, together with the Dutch reputation in integrated river basin management, makes a unique and perfect match for water diplomacy in The Hague. And I'm sure that this conference will also further, within a new water perspective, the calling of The Hague as an international city of peace and justice to build a more just and peaceful world. In that respect, my dear friends, we can also highlight several links between your work and what was labeled as the Hague approach not so very long ago during the centenary celebrations of the Peace Palace. The Hague approach contains six principles of achieving peace in post-conflict situations and, it, and, uh, and is the result of an analytic study by the Hague Institute for Global Justice. The aim of that study was to define the essential characteristics of initiatives which have helped bringing sustainable peace closer. The Hague's history as a world center of peace and justice goes back actually a very, very long way. This tradition is indeed linked with Hugo Grotius, the father of international law, the legendary pacifist Bertha von Suttner, who attended the Hague Peace Conference and the opening of the Peace Palace, as well as the great philosopher Immanuel Kant. In his work, Towards Perpetual Peace, Kant wrote, and I uh, quote, Building a just and peaceful international system is the most difficult of all tasks, and finding a perfect solution is next to impossible. All we can be asked to do is to make our very best effort to approach this idea." Unquote. It is now up to you, up to us, you might say, to show perseverance and uh, resolutely work to build a world in which everyone has access to water and water-related conflicts can be avoided. Further generations will, and I'm sure, be thankful of what we are doing here in The Hague and will be indeed thankful for what you are doing here today because this meeting is not just a meeting. It is a very important one and I'm very honored on behalf of the municipal administration that you have chosen uh, your conference venue to be indeed the International City of Peace and Justice, and that is, of course, The Hague. I wish you an excellent and constructive conference, and I wish you all well. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Baldu Singh, uh, for your encouraging words. Um, what I didn't mention is that I'm of the UPS Center The Hague, which is in this building since 2012. Thank you for the hospitality also, Mr. Van Hoogstraten, to have us here. Um, and now we are going to hear and see the um, heads of institutions which consist, which, can, uh, which are the um, institutions of the Water Diplomacy Consortium, already mentioned by the Deputy Mayor. Resources determines the well being, prosperity, and stability of societies worldwide. As fresh water becomes more scarce and is often unevenly distributed, tensions over its use are manifested in everyday life. Water security and the fair distribution of water 
is an issue of growing importance on the international agenda. Water cooperation is urgently required as water recognizes no administrative borders. There are 276 transboundary river basins in the world and an estimated 148 nations have international basins within their territory. The stakeholders in these basins have different and sometimes conflicting needs, claims and cultures. How do you build a communication channel between these different cultures? That is the key. That is the most difficult thing. And that takes time because a cultural change is always taking time. Notwithstanding that uh, it requires a great deal of financial investments, long-term investments. But uh, if you invest into water, you invest into peace. Um, the history of water conflicts, and especially in, in the low countries, is that it creates institutions which are designed to cooperate rather than to have conflict with each other. We have a very good domestic experience in creating the institutional structures for solving conflicts around water. So why not export them abroad? Well, in my view, I think water can be both a source of conflict and a source of cooperation. Uh, it is, doesn't have to be inevitable that you can have uh, water-related uh, disputes. And I think it is important for the Hague Institute, together with our partners in the Water Diplomacy Consortium, uh, in making sure that through our uh, innovative, policy-relevant research, our facilitation work, um, convening of conferences, and a hands-on work on projects in countries at risk, that water becomes something which brings together communities and people and which can be a source of cooperation rather than a source of friction. Water diplomacy is the profession that is instrumental in establishing the opportunities for cooperation. Water diplomacy is a matter of relations both between states and within states. It is about mutual decision making and the involvement of participants. Stakeholder participation is therefore a vital element both in water governance and in water diplomacy. Water diplomacy is a relatively new approach by combining a whole range of instruments, legal, voluntary, technical, economical, arbitration, mediation, to uh, manage water conflicts and uh, in this way it uh, gives room for diplomats and other people uh, involved in water conflicts to make effective solutions. Well, I think first of all the biggest challenge is to have water diplomacy recognized as such. Uh, recognized uh, by governments uh, and the larger diplomatic uh, community as a tool uh, that can help a great deal in peace building. But water diplomacy is very important because it plays an important role in preventing and managing water-related disputes, which is why we have made it a flagship project here at the Hague Institute for Global Justice. The Water Diplomacy Consortium acknowledges that the increasing stresses on water must be countered by effective mitigating responses, including the enhancement of water diplomacy to prevent and resolve water-related conflicts. For this reason, the Water Diplomacy Consortium has recently been launched during the International Year of Water Cooperation. The Water Diplomacy Consortium, which we are working on with four other partners, has a tremendous potential to become a hub here in the Netherlands for really innovative research, practical on the ground activities, and a hub for training for on water related disputes. So it has tremendous potential and we are very uh, grateful with the support we've got from the other partners as well. Well, Klingendal is a 35 years old uh, think tank on international relations in general, so we are concerned about new sources of conflict, water among them, and on a, a particular niche diplomacy 
uh, of the uh, of the Netherlands. Um, the added value of our institute is that we are training the next generation of water leaders for the benefit of the developing countries and countries in transition, where most of these problems are. UPS brings added value to the uh, water diplomacy approach by combining the more technical aspects of water management with uh, knowledge and experience in the area of peace and peace building. The Dutch Water Governance Center has put together the five building blocks for good water diplomacy in a booklet. This booklet is called, not surprisingly, Five Building Blocks for Good Water Governance. It is our contribution for good water diplomacy in the years to come. The International Conference of Water Security and Peace in The Hague is an important stepping stone in addressing the growing needs for water conflict prevention and resolution. The Netherlands Ministry of Foreign Affairs and the Municipality of The Hague recognize the importance of these needs. Uh, water diplomacy is not just diplomacy as such. It does require a great deal of uh, expertise uh, from water field. It does require a great deal of knowledge from international relations, how governments are, are functioning. It does require the knowledge of law, international law. So it's, it, it's a complex issue. Uh, and that is why it is, it is it's so important that hydro diplomacy, as some uh, uh, define it, is really established as a principle. And conferences like this one can make a major contribution to that. This conference creates opportunities for dialogue, knowledge exchange and partnership building. Participants will explore the role of negotiation and arbitration in water disputes, highlighting specific cases in the Middle East, North Africa and Asia, among others. The conference will also focus on the need to optimize present arrangements and particularly the need for additional diplomatic tools to remove political bottlenecks and to address recurring conflicts. Perhaps the most important uh, uh, element for, uh, for action uh, is uh, indeed invest into hydro diplomacy. Uh, create the next generation of leaders who are equipped with the necessary means uh, to use water as a source of cooperation and as a source of conflict. I think this is, a, this, is a, this is a tallest order. It will take time, but there's no other way. The world in general is, uh, during the last 20 years, relatively successful in solving conflicts at the negotiation table rather than on the battlefield. Uh, so I would urge this conference to add water as a new domain of not only of conflict but of uh, peaceful uh, uh, conflict solution as well. Let's join our forces, our combined forces, to make water diplomacy an effective instrument for solving water conflicts? I would say um, engage fully in the conference. We want your ideas, uh, we want your suggestions, we want constructive criticism, but above all, do come up with practical recommendations which can be of help to policymakers in the Netherlands, in other parts of the world, to make sure that water is a source of cooperation and not a, a source of friction and a cause for dispute. If we can come up with those practical recommendations on the way forward, I think the conference would have uh, been an unquestionable success.